Hello and welcome to uh, the series, video series on section 4.2, the Lock 5 textbook. All right, so we're looking at uh, randomization distributions. So we're going to go back to the tea versus coffee example. So this was the uh, very first example we did, not the prostate cancer, but the immune response from the uh, first video in this series. So the original sample was the difference between the tea drinkers, tea drinkers were X1, and the coffee drinkers, X2, was 17.12. So the tea drinkers had a 17.12 average more than uh, the coffee drinkers for their immune response. And this randomization distribution goes from reshuffling um, all those data points, again, a thousand different times, and then all those values are distributed. So I don't know, what do we do when the extremity of the observed cystic isn't obvious? Well, we need a, a formal way of measuring how extreme a cystic would be if H0 were true. Again, the null hypothesis is that mu1 equals mu2. There's no difference in the immune response. So that's why it's centered around zero. All right, so how do we get this way of measuring? P-value. P-value is a proposition a proportion of samples when the null hypothesis is true that would give a statistic as extreme as or more extreme than the observed sample. So it's kind of a kind of a wordy definition, but the PA value is a percentage or proportion of your sample data or more extreme assuming the null hypothesis is true. So we're going to spend a lot of time really the rest of the semester kind of focusing on p-value, how to compute it, what it actually means, what it tells us. So I would say you know, write down this definition, see if you can make this definition make sense to you, uh, but we're going to be going over this idea for the rest of the semester, essentially. Okay, so now we're looking at, um, oh, sorry, the same example as before, the tea versus coffee. So mu1 equals mu2, the immune response system, the null is zero. So, actually, I'm going to go back. Notice the original sample we got from the two groups was 17.12. So down here, 17.12 on this randomization distribution is right here. And this data point right here is actually the proportion of all the randomized samples that, that have this statistic or more extreme. So... The summary, the distribution, this is the distribution of the statistic if the null hypothesis were true. There's your observed statistic. And uh, this is your proportion as extreme as the observed statistic. And that is your p-value. The p-value is 0 0.026. So if there is no difference between tea and coffee regarding immunity, we would only see the results this extreme 26 out of a thousand times, or 0 0.026 proportion. So the question is, is that too unlikely for you, or is, do you think that's probable via random chance? So what kinds of statistics would we get just by random chance if the null hypothesis were true? And then uh, what proportion of these statistics are as extreme as our original sample statistic? So calculating p-value for chapter four is to create a randomization distribution via stat key and then compute a p-value. All right, so now we're looking at green tea supplements. This was the example we're looking at prostate cancer. P1 were all those that uh, took a green tea supplement and P2 is the group that did not, took a placebo. And then we're given a distribution, uh, 2,000 samples, a randomization distribution, assuming H0 is true. So which, what is H0? That P1 equals P2, or the null is zero. Then our observed statistic, this was the one out of 30 minus nine out of 30 to get a minus 0.267. That's very far away from the null hypothesis relative to the rest of the data. So that gives us a fairly small p-value, 0 0.0005. So if green tea supplements do not prevent cancer, the chance of seeing these results, the experiment that was conducted, this extreme is only one out of 2,000, 0 0.0005. 
So I would argue this is fairly strong evidence that green tea does seem to have a positive effect on lowering cancer rates. Okay, so let's use a randomization distribution below to test um, the null hypothesis that rho equals zero. Remember, this is correlation. So you're assuming there's no correlation between two data sets. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some positive correlation. Rho is greater than zero. So I want to match these statistics, R equals 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5, with these three different p-values. So let's take R equals 0 0.1. In this randomization distribution, where is 0 0.1? 0.1's right around here, hovering my mouse around there. So the p-value is the probability or the proportion of getting this value or more extreme. So notice rho is greater than zero. It's going to the right. So my p-value is the proportion of all of these samples that I'm circling right now with my mouse. The proportion from 0.1 or more extreme is your p-value. So if r is 1, this is probably about a third or about 0.35. So if R is 1, you get a p-value about 0.35. Your likelihood of getting R equals 1 is about 35%, fairly high. If R were 0.3, we want to find 0.3 on the table, see on the bottom right here, 0.3. The p-value would be the proportion that is 0.3 or more extreme. So I'm circling right now the proportion of this randomization samples that are 0.3 or greater. And that's probably about 10, 15%. So 0.3 would go with 0.15. And lastly, if R is 0.5, that would be right around here. Then the likelihood, or the, the statistics that are 0.5 or more extreme would be right here, just these six outcomes out of these you know, thousand or so. So we have a very small amount. So the p-value that goes with 0.5 would be 0 0.005. Okay, so looking at the alternative hypothesis, we have tea versus coffee. The alternative was that tea is greater than coffee. So since tea is greater than coffee, this is a greater than, we're looking at an upper tail. Our p-value is just these values right here. We're looking at the value we get or more extreme. On the green tea, we're looking at proportion of green tea that developed cancer was less than those coffee, the coffee drinkers, or excuse me, the placebo takers. So since we have a less than for the null hypothesis, we're looking at a lower tail. So that's why we only look at this side. So if we have a greater than for the alternative, we're looking at a right tail or upper tail. If we have a less than for the alternative, we're looking for a lower tail or a left tail. So a one side alternative contains either less than or greater than or less than. A two side alternative contains a not equal to. So the p-value is proportion in the tail in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis. Let's go back to that last slide. Since we had a greater than, the p-value is only on the right tail. If we have a less than, the p-value is only the left tail. For two-sided alternative hypothesis, the p-value is twice the proportion in the smallest tail. Let's look at a, I'll look at a visual. Uh, but in a second, in a, a tea versus coffee example, suppose instead of asking whether tea boosts immunity, the study was designated to investigate whether tea or coffee is better for the immune system. So they're just looking to see if there's a difference in tea or coffee. So in that case, the alternative would be not equal. We're not stating which one is better than the other. So if we're doing tea versus coffee, but the alternative is not equal, here's our data. Our data was a 17.12. The p-value on the previous alternative was 0 0.026. But if we're doing a not equal to alternative, we need to double this to account for both of these two tails. So p-value would be 0 0.026 times 2. Or to think about it, it'd be 0 0.026 plus 0 0.026. So the p-value is going to be twice the proportion of the smallest tail 
if your alternative hypothesis contains a not equal to. So here's a good way to kind of visualize this process. The first example up here, if we're looking at a right tail, the alternative is a greater than. And then in the stat key, we're only looking at the right tail. If we're looking at a left tail, that means your alternative is less than, and we're only going to look at the left tail or the left side of the distribution. And if we have alternative hypothesis of not equal to, that's a two-tailed test. In stat key, you put the two-tail, and your p-value would actually be both of these added together. And as a quick caution, the p-value can be calculated based on the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So you want to make sure the order of uh, your alternative matches the order when the statistic is calculated. And I'm going to go over an example, uh, do a video of an example um, of a difference of means or difference of proportions where this comes up. So as a check, if you are doing um, a one-sided test, a less than or greater than alternative hypothesis, p-value can't be more than 0.5. It can only be 0.5 or less. All right, so as a summary, the randomization distribution shows what type of statistics would be observed just by random chance if the null hypothesis were true. A p-value is the chance of getting a statistic as extreme as that observed if the null hypothesis is true. And finally, a p-value can be calculated as the proportion of statistics in the randomization distribution as extreme as, or more extreme than, the observed sample statistic. All right, thank you.